Hey everybody, in this video we are going to talk about how to solve absolute value equations. So you've seen when you graph it like a function, what the graph looks like, um, that V. Now we're going to talk about how to solve equations when you have an absolute value in them. Because it's not just as simple as isolating X anymore because of the properties of absolute value. So if you look at this first one, just the absolute value of X equals 2, you're trying to think what values of x would make this true. Well, this one's pretty simple. There's not too much going on. So you'll probably think, well, x could be 2 because the absolute value of 2 is 2. That works. So 2 is a solution. Um, but now you have to think about kind of an alternate way of thinking is that x could also equal, what do you think? What could x also equal? I feel like Blue's Clues. That's right, negative two. <laughs> um, because if I input a negative two instead of x, and I'm testing, does that equal two? Well, absolute value is like a distance. The absolute value of negative two is positive two, and that equals two. So there's actually two answers to this, negative two or two. So with absolute value, you have to consider the fact that what's inside the absolute value could equal the positive version of the result or the negative. Um, now on this next one, absolute value of x equals negative 5, you might think, oh, I'm going to make it equal negative 5. Let's test that out. So I'm putting question marks. So if I input a negative 5, does that equal negative 5? Well, no, because the absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5. Um, you could try positive 5. That's not going to work. Nothing's going to work. So this is what I have to say about that. Impossible. 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 So hopefully that's memorable. When you have the absolute value equal to a negative, there's no value of x you can plug in to make it work. So whenever you have the absolute value equal to a negative, it's going to be no solution. It's just impossible. So the rest of them, let's go through. So the steps you want to follow, the first thing you want to do is isolate the absolute value. Meaning, you just want, like, absolute value of stuff equals a number. So, like, on example two, this 5 is in the way. Like, my first goal is to get it to just be 2x minus 7 equals a number. So, you want to isolate the absolute value. That's step one. Step two is you want to set up two cases. Because in this absolute value, so what I'm about to highlight this x minus 7, it could equal two different things that will make it work. Um, if I made this equal 13, that would be good. It could also equal negative 13. And I'll get the left side to equal the right side. So I describe this as setting up two cases. x minus 7 could equal 13, and I'll get an answer. Or... And mathematically, the correct word to write there is or x could equal, I'm sorry, x minus 7 could equal negative 13. So two cases. Notice how I didn't change the x minus 7 at all. What changed was it could equal 13 or negative 13. You could equal the positive result or the negative result. But I literally just copy and paste what's in the absolute value. So some people think, oh, absolute value, I need to make everything positive, but no, um, that's not how it's going to work. That doesn't work. That won't give you the right x value. So x could equal 20 or x could equal negative 4. And you get your two solutions, so negative 4 or 20. So I isolate absolute value, set up the two cases, and then you just solve... 
um, both equations. So you can set up um, two equations for yourself. Now on this one, um, it's five plus the absolute value. So like that, it's an additional five added to the absolute value. So to get rid of it, I'm gonna subtract five. So 12 minus five is eight, okay? So this is step one, isolate the absolute value. You don't wanna set up the two cases from the beginning. It will give you the wrong answers. Um, so now I set up the two cases where 2x minus 7 could equal 8 or 2x minus 7, so that's the same, 2x minus 7 could equal negative 8. So 2x could equal 15, so 15 halves, or uh, negative 8 plus 7 is 1, x could equal 1 half. So those are my two possible answers. Um, and those are correct. If I plug them in, it'll work. So you can plug in 1 half for x, and I'll have negative 6 becomes positive 6. Wait, 1 minus 7 is negative. Wait, does that work? Let me pause. Oh, I see. Okay, so this is a testament as to why you should always check your work. This should be negative 1 because I added positive 7. So negative one half or fifteen halves. You can just write the two answers, or you could be fancy, put it in curly brackets. If you wanted to try setting up the two cases to start, um, like setting it equal to twelve or negative twelve, you'll see how you'll get two answers that just don't work when you plug them in. You're not gonna um, make the left side equal the right side. So those are two basic examples. Let's see some. More. So I messed up in the recording of this video, so this is just some filler noise. Uh, take a deep breath. Just recording over some mistakes because I couldn't figure out how to delete them. If you want to fast forward until you get to the next slide, that might be a good thing to do. Uh, making these things as hard, guys. All right, I think that's long enough. Okay, so now I want to show you what to do when you have a number that's attached to the absolute value by multiplication. So that two is just next to it, so it's attached by multiplication. And just like if the absolute value were parentheses, um, I can't just like add a two, I'm gonna have to divide by two, and I'm gonna have to add seven first. Uh, you can't distribute the two in because the two is not being absolute valued. It's just not in there. Absolute value is kind of like a, a barrier. They are grouping symbols, but you can't put the two in there. It completely changes the expression. But what I am gonna do first is add seven. You always do like reverse PEMDAS to isolate things. So I have two times the absolute value of x plus six equals zero. That's fine. Um, it can equal zero. Um, now, just realize what I'm going to do here is divide both sides by 2. So the absolute value of x plus 6 equals 0 divided by 2, which is 0. No problem. Um, you're allowed to do 0 divided by a number. Remember, that's okay. You just can't do a number divided by 0. That's undefined. But that's not what's happening here, nor will that happen in these cases. So um, this is the only time where you're only going to get one answer when it's equal to zero because now I've isolated my absolute value so isolated check but when I go to set up my two cases it's x plus six equals zero or x plus six equals negative zero well that's not a thing and you just get one answer of negative six okay um, last example so I'm not going to add two I see this all the time think about how that two is attached to the absolute value and that's what you're trying to get on its own. It's attached by multiplication. So to make it a 1, I'm going to divide by negative 2. And this is what I warned you in the beginning was impossible. I could go through the steps and solve. Do 3x minus 14 equals negative 50. 3x minus 14 equals 50. Algebraically, the... The steps will give me two answers, but if you plug them in, they won't work because there's absolutely nothing you could replace x with and then simplify what's in the absolute value 
take the absolute value and end up with a negative. It's impossible. Impossible. Okay, so this is uh, no solution. No solution. So your outcomes, um, it's possible to only have one answer, like x equals negative 6. It's possible to have no solution. But most commonly, you're going to have two solutions, like you saw on the previous slide. All right. Good luck.